If you were looking down at Earth 600 million years ago, you would have seen a very different planet, a planet that was covered pole to pole in ice. It was the ultimate snowball planet. Could life still cling on? It's very hard to know because there's scant evidence of life during this period. The Ediacaran fauna holds the evolution of life on Earth today. Every animal we see on the planet today has its origins from this point of time. But about 580 million years ago, these ice sheets retreated and we see an explosion of life. It's life as we've never seen it before, on a scale like we've never seen it before, and it's exemplified by what we call the Ediacaran fauna. It's frustrating, though, because many of these fossils are very difficult to interpret. Because they're soft-bodied, some of them as large as me. It's still very hard, though, to pick apart these delicate fossil remains, which very often we only have impressions of. It's difficult to understand what they actually were and how they fit into the great plan of life on Earth. The Ediacaran fossils are crucial to our understanding of life on Earth. These were literally the answer to Darwin's dilemma. In Origin of the Species, Darwin fought with the fact that there were no fossils predating the later Cambrian explosion, which was rich in fossils, in hard-bodied fossils. He did not see what was happening before this explosion of life. But the Ediacaran gave us this pre-life explosion on Earth, where we see soft-body fossils preserved in unique circumstances, which give us insight to life on Earth, when really we should not be knowing anything what was going on, for the simple reason soft-bodied animals do not preserve easily. They are so rare. When you're looking at the fossils from the Ediacaran times, it's really frustrating. Some of them do actually look like animals that you might expect to see on the planet today. This bizarre structure here, for many years, was thought to be similar or analogous to a sea pen. Now, sea pens live on the ocean floor today and look structurally very similar to this guy here. This is a rangiomorph creature called Charnia from about 560 million years ago, found within the Charnwood Forest in the UK. When you look at closely at the structure of this animal, though, key features are upside down if you want it to be a sea pen. It would have grown in a completely different way to a sea pen as well, making this a completely different animal. So whilst we find the fossil remains, and this is a small one, these grew up to about six feet in length, two meters, big creatures. And we often find them on bedding planes covering the whole surface. So it was a rich environment. But what they actually were, how they functioned, is still open to debate. While some of the fossils that are found within the Ediacaran fauna are potentially body fossils, where we can see the whole animal, like we do here of Charnia. Some, though, are trace fossils. This is where it's just the impression of where an organism has left a trace of an action, whether it be a footprint, well, no feet at this time. In this case, it's a blob print. Here we can see something like Cyclomedusa, a jellyfish, which has landed on the seabed, and when it has done so, it's left an impression. And remarkably, this fine detail has been preserved for over 560 million years. The Ediacaran fauna reached its zenith some 575 million years ago. It's exemplified by localities such as Mistaken Point in Newfoundland, where vast bedding plains are covered with these beautiful fossils of the Ediacaran age. It is not until, though, about 530 million years ago that we see what came known as the Cambrian Explosion. These are the beautiful hard-bodied fossils that so typify the Cambrian period, creatures that we all come to know and love. However, they have their earliest origins in localities such as the Burgess Shale and the Chenjiang fauna of China. The Cambrian Explosion is typified by the evolution of hard parts. For the first time, the fossil record is littered with evidence, evidence which is so crucial to piecing together how these animals relate to each other, and more importantly, 
how they relate to life on Earth today.